Good morning, TPT. This is Nathan here. Um, before we start, I just want to let you know that today I'm recording on the X-T2 in 1080p, and I'm using the Fujinon 23mm f1.4 at f1.4 with face detect. Okay, I just want to do a quick video on JPEG image quality with the Fuji X-T2. Now you've probably all heard that the one of the main reasons a lot of people buy the Fujifilm is because of the JPEG image quality and the film simulations that Fuji has. Now what I want to do is I want to edit an image on the X-T2. Now this will be a wedding image because primarily we do use these for wedding photography. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a RAW file on the X-T2. I'm going to show you how you edit that RAW file in camera and then export it as a JPEG. The same image I'm going to bring over into Lightroom um, and we'll do exactly the same edits in Lightroom and then we'll compare the images. Now the reason I wanted to do this in Lightroom is because primarily that's what we use um, at the photography team. Um, and I've also heard that Lightroom is not the best software for editing X Trans sensor um, raw files. So I just wanted to put that to the test, see how it does compare to an image that is actually comp um, exported from the camera. So if you join me at the computer, sorry, if you join me at the desk, um, I'll show you how you first of all edit and export an image from from the Fuji XT2 um, as a JPEG. Okay, so got my XT2 here. Got a, I'm going to do a couple of images actually. Um, this first one is one that was um, taken by obviously the side of a, a lake um, at sunset time. Uh, one, this was just a one flash setup. Very nice image, and obviously at the camera it looks it looks nice. But what I'm going to do is just do a few little tweaks to this image um, now. So. Obviously, with the XT2, we can um, convert this from RAW to JPEG in camera. First thing we do is we'll hit the Q button. And that will bring us down to the RAW conversion menu. Uh, there are a few options, but all I'm going to do today is, first off, I'm going to go to Film Simulation. I'm going to change that to Astiosoft. Then I'm going to come down to the highlight tone and I'm just going to bring the highlights down one stop. Then I'm going to go to the shadow tone and I'm going to bring that up a stop. Uh, then I'm going to go to the sharpness and I'm going to hit plus one. Now unfortunately I don't know what that would translate to in Lightroom but we'll, we'll basically just give a little um, sharpness on the raw image that I convert in Lightroom. So we'll add a bit of sharpness to this one. Uh, obviously there are other uh, options. There's noise reduction, you can change the color space. You can obviously increase or decrease exposure. There's a dynamic range tab. Um, so you can add grain, you can change the white balance. So there's numerous things that you can do in the camera. Now once you've made them little edits, you hit the Q button again, it will pro process that image and it'll give you a preview of what you're going to get. So I'm happy with that. So what I'll do now is I'll press menu, which or the OK button which will store it. Now that's stored as a JPEG. So we'll just go on to the next image. Now this is an image that was taken uh, obviously inside um, of a guy that was obviously playing the guitar for the entertainment. This one was at 6400 ISO. That's the reason why I'm going to just do this one, just to show you the, the image quality that you can get from this camera at such high ISOs. Um, what I'm going to do is quite simple with this one. I'm going to hit the Q button again. I'm going to come down to Film Simulation. And I'm going to hit Acros, which is a black and white film simulation beautiful rendition of black and white um, and all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of sharpness plus one again 
not going to add any um, noise reduction because I want you to be able to see what, what noise you do get from this camera at 6400 ISO. So again, we'll press Q to create that. There's the black and white. We'll press OK to store. And now if I scroll through my images, there are my um, JPEGs. Now just a quick uh, pointer here. This is the RAW. If I was to press the dial wheel, that's my zoom. Now when you've got a JPEG, when you do press the scroll wheel, you get a lot more zoom in on the image. So that's quite handy if you do need to preview your image. Just do a quick JPEG conversion and you um, can get a nice zoom in on the image. So I'm going to take those images now, put them into Lightroom, and then we'll um, edit the raw versions of those again in Lightroom, convert it to a JPEG, and then we'll compare the both. Okay, so you join me in Lightroom. Um, these are the two images that I've just um, obviously edited in camera. <clears throat> these are the raw files. So this is as it came out of the camera. I will hit reset just to, to prove that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'll go through the settings that I edited in camera. I have written them down. Um, so with this shot, the first thing I did was I changed the film simulation to Astia Soft. Now the way we do that is we go into the film camera, sorry, the camera calibration um, tab, and then we can see all of the um, camera simulations that you have with the Fuji files. So we'll click Astia Soft, and immediately that sort of darkens the, the, the blacks and just makes the sky pop, and it's a lovely skin tone. Well, then what I did was I added, well, sorry, I, I decreased the highlights by uh, minus one. I, I set a stop. No, I presume that is a stop because I'll see in Lightroom we don't have stops with highlights. So what I want to do is I'm just going to reduce it by 25, and I will just estimate that that's a stop. I then brought the shadows up by one, so if we bring them up by 25, and then we added some sharpness, so we're going to the detail tab. It's already added some sharpening, but what I'll do is I'll just put that to 25, and I will say that that is a stop. Um, so there's the image. <clears throat> I mean, in my view, it looks still looks rather dark, so I, I would increase the... Um, exposure on this one but I just want to see how that does compare with the one that was done in the camera. There's a, a three to one crop. Um, this was taken using the X-T2 and the 23mm f1.4 lens. It was at one sixtieth of a second and it was f4.5 ISO 400. Like I said before that was a single light used on this one. Um, so that's that one edited. We'll now go into the next one, which was the the shot of the uh, gentleman playing the guitar. And again, if we hit reset on this one, and the only thing I did with this one is I added, I changed it to a, a camera across, which is here. Boom, as in the words of Jared Polin, look at the blacks in that. I mean that that film simulation is beautiful. I mean that that picture has just popped out now. Um, I also added a little bit of sharpening, but it defaults to adding sharpening anyway on these images. So that's technically the the sharpening added. Um, like I said before, this was again used the twenty three millimeter f one point four lens. This was at f2, 1 one sixtieth of a second at ISO 6400. Um, there's no noise reduction, so let's do a 3 to 1 crop. So that is the grain that we get at 3 to 1 as a 1 to 1. Um, 
and obviously we'll fit that to the screen. So that's that's that image done. What I'm going to do now is we'll select both. We'll go to File, Export. Um, we'll take them to my desktop. We'll just name them as the photography team with original file number. I don't want to resize them. I'll put that back up to 300 ppi. So they're not going to be resized. I don't want to limit the size to 999 um, kilobytes. 100%. I'm not going to add any sharpening. No watermark. And they're going to go to the desktop. So let's export those two now. Okay, so here are the two first images. Um, the Lightroom edit is on the left, and the camera edit is on the right. Now immediately you can see that the image that I edited in the camera is brighter. Now I would say that's probably one stop brighter. Um, if we zoom in, for image quality purposes, um, they're both looking good. Obviously, the skin tones on this one look nicer because uh, it's obviously a little bit brighter. Just find some noise again. They both look fine. Sky, how's that rendered? Maybe a little bit more noise in the sky with the Lightroom image to what I've got from the camera. Um, let's just quickly go back into the develop module. We'll select the um, image that was edited in Lightroom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that up one stop. So now that's the JPEG from the uh, Lightroom. So I'm now going to take them back again into the library mode and we'll compare them again. And now you'll see that they're almost identical. So for some reason, when the image is exported from the camera, it's a stop brighter. Um, and when it's took when it's taken into Lightroom. Um, for some reason it's a stop darker. Now I don't know if that's a way for um, Fuji to try and save shadow tones and highlight tones but um, I have noticed that when I do Im import images into Lightroom they always seem a little bit dark. Maybe this explains the reason why but um, there is also a noticeable difference in skin tone with the one that's been edited in the Fuji. Um, very slight, subtle tones. Um, let's try and zoom in a little bit further. Let's go for a three to one zoom. And there we go. Um, yeah, the Fuji file from the camera seems to have a lot less noise. Um, seems a little bit sharper. If we go into the sky again, you can see the difference. Noise in the sky on this image, none on this image. Well, there is a little bit, but not as much as this. Maybe it's because I've just brought that up a stop. Um, who knows, but um, the file that's edited in camera appears to be um, a little bit nicer than the one that was edited in Lightroom. So we'll go across to the next two images. Okay, so these are the two images that were taken at 6400 ISO of the guitar player. Uh, this is the three to one crop. Um, they both look fine. Again, we notice that the 
image edited in Lightroom is a little bit darker than the one edited uh, in the camera. However, in this instance, I do prefer the, the darker look to this image. Um, let's zoom in again and just have a look. Both okay, image quality wise. Yes, they are grained, but uh, that was 6400 ISO. Let's, let's take that back to a one to one crop, a bit more realistic. Again, the image taken or edited in the Fuji seems just a little bit sharper, a little bit more detail. Um, however, because it's brighter, we have more noise. You can see noise here. But when we look at the image that was edited in Lightroom, because it's that little bit darker, there's less noise. So it's hard to say really on an image to image basis which is best. Uh, with the first image, um, I thought that the image that came from the camera was a better um, image. And then these, these two, I think that the, the image that came from the actual Lightroom is the best image. I mean, the differences are very subtle. I, you know, I, I'm happy with what Lightroom's given me um, with these images. I'll continue to use Lightroom. Um, obviously, in time, maybe Adobe will add some um, a new camera raw that will include a really good uh, raw converter for the Fuji raw files. But in the meantime, I'm going to stick with Lightroom. I'm happy with this. Um, I'd like you to let me let me know your thoughts on what you think about these images. Which ones do you think are best? What software do you use? Um, and just and just what what are your thoughts? Thanks for watching. My name's Nathan, and I'm from the photography team.